r slash no sleep hosted by you slash o two three two one i went camping when i was 13 and barely survived back in the long forgotten year of 1988 i was 13 spending my first time going on an overnight camping trip back in those days there was limited options for entertainment my parents were going to go crazy with me running around the house for the entire summer they put together some money to send me away for a trip to the lake for three days I packed my bags right away feeling excited I was finally being trusted going somewhere overnight without my parents. The group was made of six girls all around the same age with two adults as supervisors. They held three-day camping trips every weekend in the summer and normally had a bigger turnout. For whatever reason, we had a smaller group. Which was fine by the two adults taking care of us. Herding six barely teen girls around the woods was a hard enough job. The first day went smooth, despite our bursts of energy threatening to sabotage the trip. We each got into pairs as a tent buddy. We needed to set up poor tents on our own, or mostly on our own. Katie was my tent buddy. We started off strong setting up but needed help putting the last few poles into the packed dirt. I knew Katie from school but wasn't in the same class as her. She was a shy girl, still we got along just fine. The other girl started to tease her because Katie was the youngest yet the biggest girl of us all. In that moment I decided to defend her during the weekend and we kept working away at the tent ignoring the other girls until they lost interest. Proud of our work setting up our tent, we treated each other to treats we stashed away in our bags. After lunch was finished and cleaned up, the groups went down to the lake to swim. Hours went by. All six of us started to get along and by the time we needed to return to camp for dinner we were all so exhausted we let the adult supervision teach us important facts along the way. Things like what poison ivy looks like, how to know if some wild animals are in the area. Stuff that we should know, but was always good to be reminded even if summer wasn't for learning. Drew wanted us to roast hot dogs for our dinner. He was finding it difficult to light a fire used a flint kit. He wanted to teach us a new skill. After a few minutes of a pack of hungry girls complaining he gave up digging out a lighter instead. Stacy was our other supervisor. She was a pretty girl only about 20. When you're 13, that seems pretty old. Her nails painted cute colors us girls loved. She didn't seem to be the outdoors type of girl. Drew might have needed help keeping all the girl in check and called in some backup. Drew was a youth pastor and the church ran the camping trips. Even so, he did not make us say grace before eating or even have any religious activities planned for us. He let us stuff ourselves and when dark came, we told some scary stories around the fire. It was only 9 p.m. when he made all of us go to bed but from the active day our little bodies felt like it was much later. Each of us went to our tents with almost no complaints about bedtime. I'd fallen asleep very easily. Only an hour passed before Katie woke me up by nervously shuffling in her sleeping bag. Are you alright? I asked her in a low whisper. Sorry, did I wake you up? She replied back in the dark. Nah. I lied. I wondered if she needed to go to the washroom. A porta potty was set up pretty close by. Do you need to go pee? I asked her. I couldn't see her face in the dark. I rustled around looking for my flashlight. I didn't need to go but I didn't mind walking down with her if she was scared. Yeah, do. Do you think that story Drew told had any truth in it? She asked sheepishly. The smiling man in the woods? Nah. He's just making stuff up. If the woods were dangerous our parents wouldn't let us go. I heard her head move against her sleeping bag nodding at my words. Turning on the light, I helped her out of the tent for a quick pee run. Some giggling came from the tent beside us. Jane and Betty talked non-stop all day. They might chat all night if someone didn't stop them. I was tempted to jump at their tent to scare them but left it alone. They would regret staying up all night tomorrow morning. And I didn't want to get in trouble for pulling a prank. Katie was still scared. I took her hand and held the flashlight in the other. I even stood guard outside the porta potty while she took care of her business just in case. Katie had older siblings but I didn't. She seemed lonely and homesick already. I was trying my best to act like an older sister to comfort her. In the brush I thought I saw a yellow eyes flicker looking at me. Shining the flashlight in the direction of the eyes I saw nothing. Just forest animals wondering what we were doing. I was a little scared of coming across a bear or something along those lines. Ghost stories or crazy serial killers in the woods didn't scare me in that moment. The forest sounded like how a forest should at night. Spooky trees creaking and all. Just as Katie came out ready to head back a scream cutting through the night made us freeze in fear. It came from the direction of the camp. The low fire gave us enough light to sort of make out the tents and a dark figure stalking around our campsite. Watching in horror the figure went over to Drew's tent, ripped it open and dragged Stacy out by the leg. I grabbed Katie holding her close to me terrified at what was going on. 
Stacy fought the figure with everything she had. She thrashed and tossed anything within arm's reach towards the figure's face. Drew came out of the tent, tackling the person, or thing off of her. Stacy got up and ran. At first, I thought she left everyone behind, instead, she found the axe for firewood using it on her attacker. It was too much for me. I turned my head away, body shaking unable to keep watching the horrible sight. Katie was crying as we held each other waiting for an adult to come and tell us everything was alright. We had only been gone for a few minutes. How did everything go so wrong so fast? We both screamed when we heard footsteps come close a few minutes later. Opening my eyes, I saw it was Stacy, black staining her shirt. She smelled like 10 day old rotting fish and it made me gag. In her hand was the axe covered with more of that rancid smelling black liquid. Betty and Jane beside her, holding each other while crying and shaking like me and Katie. Come one. If we follow the trail, we'll hit Mr. Bobby's farmhouse. He has a phone, Stacy said trying to sound strong but her voice came out weak and shaking. Where's Mr. Drew? And Nina? And I started to say the other names of our missing campmates but my throat closed up and only a sob came out. I knew what happened to them. I just couldn't say it. They're gone. Come on. Using her free arm Stacy scooped it behind us to get us to start walking down the trail as fast as our small legs would carry us. Once we started walking Stacy kept both hands on the axe, and I was in front both hands on the flashlight guiding our way as Katie kept her arms around my waist. Betty and Jane still sobbed behind us no matter how hard they tried to choke it down. My hands shook. Every sound made me think something was just beyond the trees waiting to jump out and take us. My eyes darted around trying to see everything at once making me dizzy. The farmhouse was a half an hour walk away at the best of times. Drew's car was closer and I wondered why Stacy wasn't leading us there. I assumed Drew had his keys on him when the figure took him, or Stacy didn't want to stay at the camp long enough to find them. When you're so young and scared you don't think about other escape plans. You only accept what the adult tells you. I got another whiff of the horrible rotten fish smell when the wind shifted. Gagging and eyes watering I refused to stop. Minutes passed and the smell decreased enough to make me stop choking on the bile rising in my throat. It was only then I noticed Betty was the only one still sobbing. Stacy noticed it at the same time. We both turned to look, only seeing the small brown haired girl and Jane just gone without a trace. Run! Stacy's shout got us moving. She grabbed Betty roughly dragging her along by her arm. The girl screaming in fear. Katie was the slowest of us. She was dragging me behind. Still, I kept one arm around her, trying my best to get her to go a little bit faster. When another dark shape came out of the trees directly in front of Stacy, she didn't stop. She let out a startled scream, swinging the axe at the figure's head. I saw a flash of glowing yellow eyes before hearing the awful crack of the axe connecting to its skull. It collapsed to the trail. Stacy wasted no time yanking the blade out that was stuck in the thing's skull. I shone my flashlight trying to get a better look at the figure. Black blood like oil oozed from the head wound. The face was pitch dark and flat with no nose. Its skin so dark and wet looking. More of that smell came drifting over causing Katie to start gagging this time. Whatever this thing was, it wasn't human. That much I knew. We didn't even have time to guess at what it was before another came out of the trees. Stacy clipped it with her axe, making it scream and dart away. She was breathing hard. If more of these things came at us, I didn't think we would make it. Stacy was only one person and she had to defend three scared girls. Even so, she looked ready to do it. Another creature came at us. Sadly, while Stacy was dealing with the first one, two more came. In seconds they grabbed Betty, dragging her screaming into the woods. Stacy screamed and cursed at them, pain across her face that she didn't keep the girl safe. More and more of those creatures started to appear and poke their heads from the trees in front of us. She gave us a look. No words just a look and I knew what it meant and what to do. She ran towards the monsters, axe in hand and me and Katie ran back down the trail towards the camp knowing we would never get past the wall of pitch dark monsters. Stacy gave us some time and we weren't going to waste it. Running hard, Katie kept up with me. Tears pouring down her face. I wanted to cry but knew if I gave in to that I wouldn't be able to keep going. Lungs burning, we ran until we saw the orange light of the fire. I planned to get the hot dog pokers, or well, anything I could use as a weapon. For a half a second. I felt almost safe. Maybe if I found the keys, we could find the car and hide inside if we couldn't drive it. Maybe, just maybe, Stacy would get away and we could all go together. All my hopes were crushed when Katie stumbled, falling hard. I was running so fast I accidentally left her behind for a few paces before skidding to a stop to go back for her. A dark monster took it as a chance to swoop in trying to drag her away. 
I went by Stacy's example. I let out a war cry that would have sounded funny in any other situation. Jumping on the creature's back I hit it with my flashlight as hard as I could as many times as I was able aiming for its head. Our struggling only lasted a few seconds. I was tossed off its back, onto the hard ground. Looking at me with yellow eyes set in a dark face, it decided we weren't worth it and sulked off. I'd saved us for the moment. I needed to get Katie up and moving back into camp and get a better weapon. My stomach turned when I looked at her. A long gash on her stomach was pouring blood onto the ground. I shook my head to clear it, refusing to give up. Grabbing her under the arms I started to drag her back towards camp and towards the dim orange light of the fire. I knew some basic first aid but already was sure this was far beyond what I could help with. Leaving her behind was not an option just yet. Horrible wound or not, I needed to at least try and help her. I was sweating and panting by the time I got her by the fire. I kept repeating how sorry I was that I needed to drag her and hurting her while doing so. She was very brave and kept her sobs very low for my sake. Digging around in Drew's ruined tent I started to look for anything of use. Just normal camping gear. No weapons I could see and no car keys. I grabbed the first aid kit, another flashlight and some scissors. I was hoping to find a knife of some sort. No such luck. I avoided the other tents. I could smell the blood mixed in with the fishy rod and didn't want to know what horror waited for me inside. I tried cleaning Katie up a little but was well over my head. I didn't want to hurt her by touching her oh much. Seeing that amount of blood nearly made me sick. I didn't even know of the fact I felt faint seeing blood until that point. I was so stressed I wasn't even aware of someone walking up to our camp until they were just outside the light of the embers. My body jolted into action as I grabbed the scissors in one hand and hot dog stick in the other. The black blood-soaked axe came into view and for a brief moment I thought Stacy made it back. That was not the case. A man came into the light, dressed in baggy clothing that hung loose on his thin frame. Long straight white hair was half-heartedly pulled back into a low ponytail but most of it still stayed in his face making it hard to see his features. Who? I choked. Two left? Good for you. Ignoring me, he sat down next to the fire pit and started placing wood onto trying to get it going again. I was so shocked at his calm manner I couldn't react. A soft cry from Katie brought me back to my senses. I need help. My friend is hurt, and there are things in the woods eating everyone. Stacy had that axe is she alright? Did you see her? Please tell me something. No, please help Katie first she's really hurt and I'm so scared there is a lot of blood and I don't once the word started, they just kept coming. They poured from me without any thought of what I was saying. I was having a meltdown. As I kept talking the man started to stiffen at the sounds just pouring out towards him. He raised a hand to make me stop speaking and the other to his forehead as if in pain. When I didn't stop pleading, he snapped first. Stop talking. His voice was so loud it kept echoing through the woods for a few seconds. I was frozen in fear by the sound and dropped all my makeshift weapons. I'd never had an adult just snap at me like he just did. A tense second passed between use. Rubbing his temple, I saw regret flutter over his face from getting angry with me. It only lasted a second before he regained his tired worn out look. I went over to Katie about ready to burst from stress when he also came over. He held a hand over her wound. I looked in amazement as most of her blood just faded with a wave of his hand and her gash closed a little. Not much but it looked better than before. Who? What? I asked in a very small voice just in case he would yell again. With a long-suffering sigh, he went back to the fire back turned to me. I have a migraine. Your friend may last through the night if she's lucky. What about Stacy? Did you see her? You don't need to worry about her anymore. His cold tone nearly brought me to tears. I wanted nothing more than to just start crying and shouting but Katie still needed me. This man might be able to help us. Breaking down wouldn't help us get out of there. Glancing up I saw yellow eyes in the dark and I trembled. The creature saw us, head poking out from the trees a few feet away, drool dripping from an open mouth of sharp teeth. When it saw the man next to the fire, its eyes widened in fear and darted back into the woods. Those monsters are scared of you, I stated after I saw the strange sight. Looking over his shoot at me his eyes narrowed. He didn't want to talk and he didn't want to hear me asking questions. Until I got some answers one of those things was going to happen. I'm like, their boss. They need to follow certain rules and they broke the first one. Only seven of them should be in this area. It was ten but I cut the number down as a punishment. I've killed the extras so right now, seven are in the woods. He explained. He sounded tired for how young he looked under his bleached white hair. I wondered if he was sick or something. The other rule is they can only kill one human per night. So, seven of them can kill seven humans. So far they've killed six. My throat caught again. 
Gripping Katie's hand, I hoped it comforted her enough to calm her down after hearing such news. We were the last two left of our group. Fear seeped into my bones making me feel cold even as the flames started to rise in the fire pit. They can still kill one more, right? I asked hoarsely. He didn't reply. He only gave me another look over his shoulder to confirm that fact. Even after it sunk in, I felt a little sense of relief. The monsters wouldn't attack us. I could just stay there or around the man and be safe. Looking back down at Katie my hope fluttered away. Unless he could heal her more, there was a very big chance she won't make it through the night. I needed to get to the farmhouse and to a phone for help. Can you carry her for me? We need to get out of here. She'll die if I don't call someone to help her and I can't go alone through those woods with those monsters. My voice started out strong but soon it went back into a begging and pleading tone. I'm staying here all night. My head is killing me. My eyes darted to the axe tempted to threaten him with it until he listened. If he could kill those monsters in the woods, I had no chance of getting him to go along with my plan. If I went, I might die before I got help. If I stayed Katie might die before sunrise. The world was so unfair at that point. I held her hand so tight it must have hurt my new friend but she didn't complain. Stay here with me, Katie said finally in a weak voice. I looked down at her really wanting nothing more than to do just that. Staying meant risking her life. I wondered if she was considering that when she asked me. She might have just wanted someone by her side while she was scared and in pain. Please, can't you heal her? I begged once again. I've done as much as I can. It's not my job to help humans. I don't care which one of you lives. Only that those creatures don't break their last rule and I'm forced to kill them. You should kill them all. They, they killed I couldn't get the words out. I thought of Stacy and Drew and the girls I spent the day with. They were gone and there was nothing I could do about it aside from hate the ones who murdered them. It's just their nature. Although that fact might be impossible for a human to understand. You have been on top of the food chain for so long you think it's a tragedy when one of you dies when in any other species, it's just how life is. My gut stirred with a white hot rage. I wanted to attack the man in front of us whoever he was. I knew giving in to my emotions wouldn't help. I just let myself cry and hold Katie's hand hoping it felt like she had a sibling with her in that moment. I knew what my decision was and needed to get all the crying out before I followed through on it. You could kill her you know. That way you would. I didn't let him finish. I tossed whatever was close to me at his head. He raised a hand to deflect the attack making the scissors fly off into the darkness. I thought he would be angry at me but he just looked at me a little stunned at my reaction. I'm not killing her. Katie is a sweet girl who is going to live a long life and do so many good things. She's not dying tonight and I'm making sure of that. Standing up I went over to the axe wrapping a hand that could barely fit around the handle. It was heavy for me but I would need to manage. Rubbing the tears from my eyes, I looked around for the flashlight ready to leave to the farmhouse. Grabbing it, ready to go the man stopped me by standing in my way. What's your name? He asked and it made me stop and blink. Savannah. I told him not knowing why he asked. I'm Laren. I'll give you a little bit of help. Earring? I misheard his name. No, Lee never mind let me borrow the axe. I pulled it away from him defensively. I didn't want to trust him after he treated us but didn't have any other options. Letting he take the axe, he held it in one hand. In the other he ran a fingernail across his thumb hard enough to make it bleed. Pressing the thumb to the axe handle the wood faded turning a solid silver. The black blood disappeared off the weapon until it was a pure and glittering in the dark. When he gave it back to me, I found the now silver axe light enough for my small body to handle. This is all I can do. You have to fight through this on your own. You may have a weapon now to increase your chances but don't get cocky out there. And. I know this is hard to ask but please don't kill those monsters if you don't need to. I don't like it when my creatures have senseless deaths. Killing for food is one thing but. Gripping the new weapon in one hand I found it suddenly felt heavy. Laren, whoever he was cared about these creatures. He didn't want them to die if he could help it. He must have a rough time being the one to kill them when they broke their rules. No wonder why he looked so tired and pained. I nodded at him and looked over at Katie. She still hadn't sat up. I wasn't even sure if she was aware of what was going on. If I died and she lived she would never forgive me for leaving her. I just needed to make it for her sake. Giving them both one last look I ran off back down the trail new flashlight guiding my way. I didn't know where the farmhouse was but I remembered hearing I just needed to follow the trail out and I would see it. I used up a lot of my strength running for a few minutes. Forcing to pace myself I slowed down while looking out for yellow eyes in the dark not feeling safe in the slightest. Shortly I passed the spot where Stacy made her last stand. Tears threatened to make me stop. 
I didn't see any traces of her, only the bodies he left behind. Stepping around the scattered remains I breathed through my mouth trying to get over the smell. When I get a few feet away from the area I heard a crunching noise behind me. Turning and shining my flashlight back I gasped seeing four creatures in the middle of the trail. Long fingers snatching up pieces of the fallen and sharp teeth tearing apart the dark flesh. They looked at me but didn't stop eating. If the four stayed there, I only had three more to worry about somewhere in the woods. Quickening my pace, I went on. Every sound put me on edge. Sniffing the air to see if I could smell if any more of those monsters were coming closer to me. Ten minutes passed without any issues. I thought I saw some yellow eyes watching in the woods but they didn't approach. The silver axe might be keeping them away. After all, they had the bodies of my campmates and they're fallen to eat. Why go for someone with a weapon when they had some free meals all over the place? I thought I was in the clear when a figure came out of the tree stopping in front of me. I knew which one this was. It was the bastard that hurt Katie and the one I smashed my flashlight on. One eye was closed and the other looked at me with such hate. I knew he wanted to eat my guts for the damage I'd done to it before. It bolted towards me before I could move. A clawed arm grabbed my shirt lifting me up just as I swung the axe down into its shoulder. Letting out a scream it tore the axe out tossing it aside, then or some reason it tossed me as well. I sat up feeling bruised to see where I struck it the wound was burning and flaking the dark skin. I scrambled in a panic to where my axe was. Without any rational thought I darted off into the woods with the thing screaming following behind. I dropped my flashlight and ran blind into the woods without any idea of what I was doing. I should have stayed on the path but it was too late now. The thing was chasing me wanting to kill me. It was injured but I still didn't have much of a chance against it. I ran feeling as if my legs would give up on me at any moment. Tears stung my eyes and branches cut my face. I still ran for Katie's sake. The thing behind me stopped screaming but I knew it was still after me. My heart leapt into my throat when I thought I saw something in front of me through the trees. A beam of light moving confusing me on what it could be. Over my own breathing I didn't hear any other noises but my brain clicked into the fact I just saw some car headlights. I was near a road. I ran chest threatening to burst. I tripped over a branch and rolled into the ditch along the side of the road I was so thankful for. Every muscle screamed at me as I got up and crawled out of the ditch towards the highway. It was late but I knew this was a popular route for truckers. One would stop for me if someone would just, please drive by. When I stood it felt like I twisted my ankle. I dragged my body almost passing out from the effort. Axe still in hand I looked up and down the road frantic. A blow to my back tossed me rolling into the middle of the lane. I gasped for air and stared at the monster that just kicked me aside. My axe dropped too far for me to reach in time. It got on all fours, blood pouring from its wounded shoulder. I stared in horror knowing this was the end for and just wait for it to come at me. Yellow eyes glaring it let out a long scream of hate at me it dug its claws into the ground ready to pounce. I couldn't move my ragged body and did the only thing I could think of. I screamed right back at it. Getting up on one elbow I emptied out my lungs in a screech that made the thing not only stop from attacking me, but take a step back. We both stared each other down for a few seconds. Those few seconds might have saved my life. A blaring truck horn came from down the road. The creature looked over seeing a transport truck coming right at it. Giving me one last look, it skittered back off into the woods. The next few hours were a muddled frantic blur I still don't fully remember to this day. The driver stopped to get me off the road and down to the farmhouse and to a phone. He went with the farmer into the woods to check on Katie while I stayed at the house with the farmer's wife going between crying and sleeping. Morning came around when I woke up. Dragging my tired body to the porch I saw emergency crews scattered on the driveway and officers going onto the trail. Someone told me Katie was already on the way to the hospital and let me sit on a chair on the porch until another ambulance came for me. I sat watching everyone run around trying to get a search started for the missing girls and Drew. I didn't know why no officers started to question me yet. I might have looked too out of it to be of any help. Someone did sit beside me to talk with me though. I wasn't expecting so many of you to make it. Laren sat next to me, silver axe resting against the wooden rocking chair he was in. I. I wanted to speak but was too tired to say anything. I'm taking this axe with me. No offense it's too powerful to leave it with you. Unless you want my job. Pardon? I asked directing my herd towards him trying to see if he was joking. Kings only last for 10 years. More if they're really strong. They need to switch bodies before it breaks down. I've been doing this job for 5 and I would like to pass the crown on to someone else. It's too tiresome. I don't know why I agreed to doing this in in the first place. It's also too much of a brother to set up tests for other candidates so I'm just asked anyone who survives a supernatural encounter if they want the gig. 
I stared at him not believing the words coming out of his mouth. I didn't want to come across another monster or creature of the dark ever again. Having his job was way out of the question. This guy really needed to get some standards too. He was asking a 13 year old girl to take over such an important position. How lazy could one person be? If I could move, I would punch you for asking. I heard a small sound that was almost a laugh from him. I should have expected that answer. At least you don't need to worry about monsters bothering you again. Any king candidates are off limits. If you weren't one, you're guaranteed to be killed by something supernatural someday because you encountered some. But I refused. I started and shutting up too late. That doesn't matter. You're still an honored human the king recognized. If you don't want my job, you can become a knight. It would mean you would turn into some sort of creature but you wouldn't be under such strict rules about protecting humans as I am. You friend Katie accepted that offer to turn when she's 18. I shot my head up. Katie agreed to be tuned into something horrible like those things that attacked us? Like the things that killed everyone right in front of us? My knee-jerk reaction was anger but the reason why she would agree to such a thing came to my mind. She was hurt badly, nearly died and powerless to help me as I risked my life to save her. She might have wanted to get some sort of strength to ensure she never felt like that again. You don't need to answer right away. Hell, you can ask to become a knight or the next king right before your death. So, just let it stay in the back of your mind. He stood up from the chair axe over his shoulder and stretched. I'm leaving and I hope I never see you again. It wasn't the nicest goodbyes but I appreciated the thought behind it. Standing up I was ready to talk to the cops even though I didn't have a good story for them. I stopped when Laren looked over towards the trail and gave a small impressed whistle. Looks like I miscounted last night. What an embarrassing mistake. What I saw made me run past him and down the dirt driveway. Stacy was out of the trail coming out of the trail being guided by officers and wrapped in a blanket. She looked beat up but still alive and walking. I didn't care about supernatural kings or knights. I only cared about getting to Stacy and hugging her for fighting so hard to save us.